If you fall victim to a romance scam, it can feel humiliating. Talking about it, reporting it can be very difficult. However, Elizabeth is sharing her story, including real messages and screenshots, so you can see the complex web of tricks the scammers use, and also to try to prevent another destructive case like hers. They met on a dating app before the pandemic. Elizabeth in Georgia, just retired and about to travel. And Michael, a widower, CEO of M Oil and Gas Contractors, also in Georgia, but often traveling, speaking with what she thought was an Italian accent. So he wanted to retire in a year, wanted to sell his business to either Exxon or BP. He was excited because he finally had met someone that he thought he, could, he would be interested in, in me. He called her almost every day for almost an hour, sending multiple daily text messages and email as well, moving from friendship into love. I did for a moment think, gee, this is going a bit fast for me. And I said, well, I think we need to just take it slow. We haven't met. They were both traveling and had trouble meeting in person, but he seemed devoted. One of the first emails that he wrote me was actually quite beautiful. It was quite beautiful about, um, I had saved him from the darkness of the days that he had been through, through losing his wife, through some business uh, ventures that didn't go through. He said, I have been depressed, I have been sad, um, and you have helped me through those times. All the while, Michael was deploying a series of tactics designed to bind Elizabeth to him so she would not only believe him, but ultimately go beyond her own logic and intuition. She did not know that he had lifted many of his love messages from Facebook and other sites. She did not know Michael Lawrence was fake. A combination of pictures stolen from a real Russian man named Alexei Sitnikov and a group of scammers working together to take all she had. Michael told her he was speaking at a conference and sent pictures. The criminals copied Alexei's speaking picture and changed the name on the podium. For another conference, they fuzzed out Russian words behind him. It wasn't Michael who had met with Michelle Obama, but really Alexei. And then a test of Elizabeth's faith. One evening when he called me, there were alarms in the background. And I said, what is that? He said, oh, I must go, it's an emergency. It's a fire alarm. We're having a fire on board the, the oil rig that he was on. And I said, oh my God, are you all right? And he said, I don't know, I need to, to, to get off and I'll call you back. And I said, please call me back, please call me back and let me know you're okay. I was honestly worried about him. She passed their test. She was emotionally invested and too deep. A video call with Michael made it seem even more real. His voice was the same as their daily call, with the same accent that she later learned is from West Africa, not Italy. But the moving, talking video in the call looked like her Michael, a trick yet to be fully explained. Then one night he called me and said, I need to travel to Bangladesh. I've been awarded a contract by the government in Bangladesh. And uh, before I go there, though, I need to go to um, Denmark because my father, who has passed away, was a gemologist. And he left me um, some jewels and an inheritance that I have not claimed. From Denmark to Bangladesh, and soon, he said, to an offshore drilling platform he needed to buy this multi-million dollar oil rig for his business, but could not do the transaction from the platform. He wanted her to talk with his banker, Daniel, to get it done. He said, I'm stressed and I need help. They plead for help and you want to be that savior to them. I need help and I need you to work with Daniel to get my rig paid for. After some convincing, she agreed and went to his bank site, an elaborate fake. He sent her his password and the special login code. And behold, his account reflected the very same travels and transactions he had told her about over the four months of their relationship. She transferred the rig money as he requested, and up popped a message. 
taxes must be paid. He called me that night and said, I need your help. I'm going to reach out to my best friends. I have one in Australia, one in Tokyo. They can all provide me some money. Can you help me just a little bit to help me get my rig? Because after this, we will have a life of bliss. She gave. He thanked her and later asked for more. She gave everything she had. I was at a doctor's appointment and I got a call from a bank and it was an investigator in a bank. And he said, I just want you to know that I'm holding up. It was a final payment that I was making because you've been scammed. And I didn't believe him. I didn't believe him. <laughs> I said, what? I was so shocked. I was shaking. I was crying. I called him. I called and I said, what have you done to me? And he said, no, don't believe that. It's not a scam. I would never do that to you. And he had his banker call me. It's not a scam. I'm giving my trust fund also to Michael because we're trying to help him. They don't know what they're talking about. Send the money through. It was too late for the first payment, but she stopped the second. He called her crying. He blamed it on me that he didn't go through. <laughs> and he said, there's nothing else I can, there's no other way out of this. He said, I only have one way out of this. And I said, what are you talking about? And he said, well, he said, I'm, I'm just beyond stressed and I can't live this way. And um, he said, I'll call you right back. And this was like 10 o'clock at night. He called me back and he said, I hope one day you'll forgive me for what I'm about to do. And I heard two gunshots, two gunshots. So Carrie, I was in shock, thinking that whoever was on the other end of the line really did hurt themselves. Other players in this sick game called her after, saying they were flying to Bangladesh to claim Michael's body. She called the police. Her bond with Michael, intense, life-changing emotion, their deep love crumbled before her. It was never real. It was absolutely devastating. I was so shaken, I couldn't go out of my house. I was so ashamed, embarrassed. You go through the trauma because you can't believe that you do something so silly. And it is so traumatic. It really is. And there are times where you think you don't want to live. There's always the hope that at that end of that tunnel, with the help that one always needs through anything traumatic, um, that you will one day forgive yourself. And I'm not there. Very difficult, very sad. Now, you may say, well, I would never fall for that. Who would fall for a romance scam? But the numbers are growing, especially during the pandemic, with a record high of more than $300 million lost in 2020. The scammers use similar tactics and storylines. So if you see anything like this in your online romance or that of a friend or family member, be very wary, take action. I'm Carrie Tomlinson for Ampere News in the Cabo Studio.